The purpose of this video today is to show you just how easy it is to take a working project that you have stored on GitHub and sync it with your local machine. Now, when we use the term local and remote, local refers to this computer that we're on right now. Um, this right here is GitHub Desktop, and if you look at this, you're going to see all these different um, repositories that I've used on this computer. Clearly, there's a bunch. Many of them are owned by me, some of them are owned by my students, and um, then I have the recent ones that I've used. Now, one of the great things about using GitHub is if a student, for example, needs help with a project, they can send me a link to a public repository, I can clone it, and boom, I have their whole project on my computer. Now, sometimes the project is one that they've invited me to be a collaborator with, which means that I have the ability to make changes and edit their code. But that's not typically something that I would do. <laughs> typically, I want to be able to see their code and give them advice. And that is really helpful in this remote environment. Um, or if I'm helping somebody, you know, over Zoom, that way I can see their code and interact with it, as opposed to telling them, click here, no click here, go to that file, try this menu. I can pull up their project, project it, and walk them through the issues that they're having. So what I wanted to show you right now is how I could pull a project that I have on my GitHub online and put it on my local machine. So first, if I were to go to my uh, GitHub right here, I'm going to see, first of all, all my different repositories. And when you, when you look at this, you're going to see all the repositories that you have. You'll see some of the ones that you've worked with recently. You can click on repositories and see all of the ones that you have. Some of them are private. Some of them might be public. Um, you can also see things that are branches. You can see previous um, commits that you've made, all different types of things that we can do. What I want to show you right here is a folder that I just made, a repository. And in this repository, I have some code. And in here, I just put a Java file. So let's say for the sake of discussion, I had this code at my home computer, and then I came to school, and I wanted to be able to open it up on a computer in the lab, and I forgot to email myself my files. Or maybe it was a pretty large project and I had eight or 10 files. I didn't want to have to download them all and forget which ones I had synced and so forth. It can be a pain. And so that's where GitHub can be really helpful for syncing our files. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clone this file repository. And once I clone it, what happens is GitHub Desktop will keep track of any changes that I've made. So I'm going to go under my options, and when you're in desktop, and we'll talk about the different choices, there is create a new repository, um, you can add a local repository, you can also clone a repository, and clone is the feature I'm going to show in this video right here. So when I choose clone a repository, I can look under the ones that I have currently. Um, I can also look under ones that I have online, and so I'm just going to start um, typing, or actually I guess I can just put my URL, um, or I can filter under my own repositories that I have. And so this is going to filter under all of the ones that have the word Dana in them, which is clearly going to be a lot. Um, I can filter under Eclipse, and then there we go. Now I'm going to see the one that I just made. So github.com are my current repositories. URL would be if somebody gave me a link to open up their public repository. So that's the two difference between these two. So I'm going to click on this and then say clone. And then it's going to ask me where do I want it to go. And so the default path is going to be um, typically whatever folder you currently had. Um, a lot of people will have a folder for just their GitHub in general. And then they'll put all their repositories inside that folder. That's up to you how you want to structure your repositories. Um, but you don't want to have this really ridiculously long file path. Um, so mine is just in my, my user's path, and then I have the same default folder name is equal to the repository name. So I'm going to say clone. And then before I do that, I want you to see right here, this is my SDENA folder, and I want you to notice what's going to happen as I clone this. So I'm going to hit clone. And then, oh, voila, look at that, I have a folder. And when I open this up, I'm going to see that I automatically have a folder that matches exactly what I have online. I didn't have to do anything, I just put it there, okay? Now, right now, we can see that I have um, this system right here. And I can go and I can now open up Eclipse. And so I'm gonna open up Eclipse. And then within here, it's gonna ask me what I wanna open. And I'm going to browse to this directory um, and that's this right here and I'm going to say open 
and launch. And it just happened to pull up to it because I had previously opened it. I had actually just deleted it for the sake of this demo. Um, so that's why it was in my history that it pulled it right up. And so now if I go in my, um, let's see, oh, oops, hold on. Um, open. There we go. Apparently I'd opened um, too far up. Ah, geez Louise. Okay, so here's my code. So if I were to go ahead and I were to change this, let's say I just added another print statement. Isn't this cool, All right? Um, now, right now, if you look at my GitHub desktop, I don't see any changes, even though I've made changes. That's because nothing's been saved. And I know that nothing's been saved because I still see this star here. Now, also because this little disk icon is still um, has color. If I save my files, this gets grayed out, the star goes away. And if I click over here, oh, it's showing me that I have a change that's been made. And it even shows me exactly what was done. It shows me that this line was added. So the green means add. If I come over here and I delete this line and then again save and come over here again it's still showing me that this file changed but now it's showing me that not only do I have an add but I also have a delete and so now I can go ahead and I can push this change to my online or my remote so if I were to wanting to make a push um, I need to first make a commit so the order of steps here is commit then push so commit is essentially I say I want to make this change so I'm just going to say, um, I don't know, changed print statement. Now you don't do this every time you make a save. Pretty much you would do this after you got a big feature working at the end of a class period, after you got some core functionality done. Um, it, it pretty much locks your code in as boom, this code is good, let's save it under a commit. So I'm going to commit it. Now right now, I want you to notice the wording that it's used here. It says no local changes. So that means that nothing on my local machine, on my computer has changed. However, I do have a commit that needs to be pushed to the remote. So that means that I still have a change that hasn't been pushed online. So now if I push origin, now what that's going to do is that's going to push this code online. And so now there is no code on my local machine that hasn't been committed, and there is nothing on my machine that hasn't been pushed online. And then if I go back to my browser and I refresh, I can now see that there has been another commit. And then if I click on this commit history, I can see all of the different commits that have been made to this repository. And the great thing about this is that you can actually click on any one of these commits. You can browse the files. You can even download the entire code as a zipped file from this point on. So let's say you decide that you've made changes to your code and it's complete garbage. Um, you can go ahead and you can revert back to that. So it's, it's a really powerful tool to use. So let's talk about how I would recommend using this. If you create a folder for all of your Eclipse files for the year, then every time in that master folder that you add another folder, what's going to happen is GitHub Desktop will keep track of that. And it will just keep on keeping track of that. And then at the end of the class period, you can commit, you can push, and then when you get home, you can do what's called a fetch. And so a fetch essentially says, hey, what do you know? There's changes that were made somewhere else to this repository that you don't have on your computer. You want to fetch those changes. And so when you fetch those changes, it just immediately updates your code. It's pretty cool how quickly it does that. Let me see if I can show you an example of something. So like, for example, here, this was um, one of my uh, one of my students projects that I had opened up on my computer and there is a change that was made. So if I click pull origin, that's going to pull in the code that was updated. And so now this code base will be updated. So now it matches. And the reason why I can do that is because they shared this app with me um, during testing purposes. So um, those are just some things that I wanted to show you. We can also see where we've got some changes that have been made um, different things and so forth. So, all right, that is it for today.